Mead and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. This is Paula. Hope you guys are well. This video is the next in my divination series and this is on numerology and <clears throat> numbers and the way that they affect our lives and affect our magic um, have been around for literally millennia thousands of years okay and um i believe it was pythagoras that actually really kind of got into the effect of numbers um and what they mean in our lives when i'm referring to the numerology i'm describing in this video i am referring to the pythagorean numerology chart there is one called the chaldean uh, there are also different charts that are used in um, Hindi and a couple of other um, belief systems. So, but the one that I'm speaking about right now is based on Pythagorean numerology. And there are a couple of things um, that affect you um, that are called core numbers, okay? Wait a minute. First of all, you may say, well, Paul, what the heck is numerology anyway, okay? And I kind of, you know, just alluded to a very loose explanation of it right now. Um, numerology is, in essence, the study of numbers in your life. And as witches, our life also includes our magical path, okay? Um, so you can find out information about the world and individuals using numerology, breaking down things into a universal language of numbers. Um, numerology is the idea that the universe is a system that is then broken down. When you break it down, you are left with base elements, which is numbers. And the numbers can then help you better decide certain things like compatibility, your personality trait, things going on around in the world, and other things. And the actual origins of numerology itself is very debated, okay? And it was used by a lot of different ancient philosophies, like in ancient Egypt and Babylon were some of the earliest writings that have been found. Um, other experts say that it started in Rome and China and Greece and Japan. Um, but what is now mo modern day numerology is related back to Pythagoras. And it was really kind of uh, funny to me well funny as in funny odd that i never had run across this before and if i had i didn't remember it that pythagoras was the one who came up with the theory of the transmigration of souls in other words that your soul doesn't die when your physical vessel dies and it migrates to a new body after death um i thought that was very interesting when i was doing some of this research um in refreshing my memory on uh, numerology and its history. So there are a couple of things that immediately affect your life that all your numbers are based on, okay? Um, and the primary two things that you work with are your date of birth and your full birth name. And that is, you know, first name, middle name, last name, whatever. And those two things are used to break down into what are called your core numbers. And I'm going to pick up, pull the Pythagorean, I'll put a picture over here of the Pythagorean chart where each number of our modern alphabet then corresponds to a number and then you take those numbers and apply them to the you know letters of your name etc in different ways to come up with different core numbers that explain more about you okay the first one is what is called your life path number and this number is based on 
um, your birth date, okay? So it forms the basis of what path your life can take. It can be reflective of who you are or who you may aspire to become or who you sh who you should be it gives a little bit of flavor of your personality and traits it also can outline um challenges that may come your way because you know with everything you have like you know the light side and the dark side you know you've got your your light self and your shadow self so there are positive traits and negative traits you know quote unquote negative traits i like to call them shadow traits not negative um that are you know both equally associated with the numbers that you come up with okay so let's take one for instance um we are going to be using the information for a friend of mine's youtube channel her name is uber goober lady i will link her channel in the description box um actually i'm going to link her d live channel in the description box and pin a comment um i live stream with uber goober lady quite frequently um, on different things like the paranormal. Um, I also live stream with her about missing children cases where she and another one of our friends do research on a missing children case. I go in completely cold and I give them the psychic pickup that I get from that case knowing absolutely nothing before we start the live stream. Um, and sometimes we do paranormal talks and, and all kinds of craziness. Um, so be sure to join us on DLive. I will also link my Witch's Cauldron DLive. If you would like to go over there and subscribe, I am going to start live streaming just for grins and giggles on DLive. Um, but yeah, so we're going to use Uber Goober Lady. Um, and the date that she started her YouTube channel, okay? So her YouTube channel was started on November 20th, 2016. So November would equate to the number 11 because it's the 11th month. The day would be 20 and then 2016 would be the year, right? Is 11 is a master number you do not reduce this down you leave it as an 11 okay so the 20th day of november would be broken down to two plus zero which breaks it down and reduces to the number two okay 2016 two plus zero plus one plus six is nine okay you take 11 which was the master number plus uh let's see two for the 20th of november plus 2016 broke down to nine that equals 22 and that is also a mastered number okay so most everything you want to break down to a single digit but master numbers they are two of them so that is 11 and 22 you do not break down master numbers there is a google doc link to a google doc in the description box of this video that has a handout that you can um, follow along with you can i think you can print it out under google docs i don't think you can edit it um, and please don't try and edit it because with the different settings on computers and printers and everything like that the page breaks might be off a little bit from my computer to yours please don't try and make any edits in those documents because it makes me insane trying to get through all those and and get the document back to the way it needs to be um so it may not come out exactly right for your printer settings and everything or your resolution that you're looking at stuff versus the screenings you know a mac versus a pc versus an ipad etc 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 please don't please don't mess with the documents thank you i appreciate your suggestions but don't don't mess with the documents because it takes me a long time to fix them so her um so 22 based on the date 
of November 20th, 2016 is the life path number. Okay, we're going to call that Uber's life path number. Okay, so in general, okay, the number 11, one of the master numbers, um, relates more to like instinct and fears. And then 22 is a master number and it is called the master builder this is actually the most powerful number that there is and it's an indication of ambition success and but sometimes it re requires a lot of like guidance in differing perspectives so that you can get that success a lot of other people consider 33 a master number i never learned that i included it in the handouts but for me I didn't learn it that way, that, but some people do use it. Um, the next core number that is really important to you is what people call your destiny or your expression number. And this is based on your full birth name, okay? So again, we're going to use Uber Goober Lady. This is using every um, letter in that name, okay? And I'm going to pop that Pythagorean chart back up here. And Uber Goober Lady breaks down into the U is a 3, B is a 2, E is a 5, R is a 9, G is a 7, O's are 6s, the B is a 2, E is a 5, R is a 9, L is a 3, A is a 1, D is a 4, and Y is a seven. So the first, Uber, three, two, five, nine, that equals 19, okay? One plus nine, 19, you break it down, one plus nine is 10, and 10 then breaks down even further, one plus zero is one. So Uber would get a value of one, okay? Goober, that equals 35 when you add all those letters up. And 35 breaks down to 3 plus 5, and that is 8. So Goober breaks down to the number 8. Lady breaks down, 3147, breaks down, that's number 15, okay? 1 plus 5 equals 6, so Lady is worth a value of 6. You take Uber with a value of 1, Goober with a value of 8, and lady with a value of six, you have 15, okay? One plus five, yeah, one plus five is six. I had to look at my numbers because there was two 15s there. And there is some things when you have like repeating numbers between, you know, like if you have three eights and I, I am not that much into numerology at the end of the Google Doc. I left you some websites that you can use to, to do a deep dive on numerology. So next, let's go to what is called your soul number. Okay, this soul number is used, um, is derived by using your full birth name. And it represents your inner self. This is your desires, your likes, dislikes, your motivators, and what your needs are. And, okay, and your soul number is used, is derived only using the vowels in the full birth name, okay? So for Uber Goober Lady, now Y's are a little weird, okay? Because they could be a vowel or a consonant depending on how they're used. Usually the rule of thumb is if it's next to a vowel, it's treated as a vowel. If it's next to a consonant, it is treated like a consonant. There are a few exceptions. I'm not going into the exceptions because it would make my brain explode, but the websites that I'm going to link down below and that are linked in the handouts will explain what the exceptions are. You know, it has to do with like Num uh, names like Brian spelled B-R-Y-A-N things like that and it just makes my head hurt um, so 
what the soul number is, like I said, are your motivators, your likes, dislikes, and your desires, okay? So let's take Uber Goober Lady, okay? Using, okay, using only the vowels in Uber Goober Lady to calculate the soul number. I gotta get my, gotta get my handy little book out here. Um, from the first name of Uber, you would use the U and the E. The U is a three and the E is a five. Three plus five is eight. So for the first name, you would give it a value of an eight. For Goober, you would use the O, O, and the E. So that would be six, six, and five. That equals 17, and that's one plus seven, and that equals eight. See this repetitive of number that I was mentioning? Mentioning, and then in the last name, lady, because it follows a consonant, the Y is treated as a consonant, okay? So the only letter that you would use is the A, and it's A1, okay? So you have eight plus eight plus one, which is 17, and one plus seven is eight okay so the um soul number would be eight the next in the common calculations is the core is your personality number okay and again you are using your birth name for the personality number only this time you use only the consonants okay and the personality number, there's actually two of them that you can, can use, okay? Um, it is about how you allow others to see you, and it can also show how others do actually perceive you. But it's that side that only lets, you, let, lets people see what you allow them to see. Um, we, most of us have a persona that we put forward, and it's very rare that we drop you know, the facade or that persona, except to people that are very, very close to us. We have a very different public persona versus, you know, what we have at home. Like my personality in my videos is pretty close to what I am, but, you know, I hold a lot back in videos and on this channel versus the way I am at home, you know, with my better half, okay? So there is also what is called a minor personality number, okay? And this is based on if you have a nickname, okay? I'm not going to tell you what my nickname is because it would be too much of a giveaway to what my um, last name is. So I'm not going to I'm not going to do that here cuz I really don't want to dox myself completely. But if you have a you know nickname then you use that for your minor personality number. And those are the minor personality number um is based the minor personality kind of gives clarification to the outer personality. So, you know, my nickname would probably be more reflective of how I am really at home versus the persona that I put my outer personality, okay? I hope that, I hope that, made, that, that made sense. So we're just going to do the um, major per, the personality number for Uber Goober Lady because that's kind of like her... <laughs> her moniker, you know, and we all call her Uber. Um, so, but it's using the consonants only. So Uber would only use the B and the R. That would be a two for the B and a nine for the R, which equal 11. That's a master number. You would not break it down, okay? Goober, you would only use G, B, and R. And the G is a seven, the B is a two, and the R is a nine. So that would equal 18, one plus eight equals nine. So Goober would be nine. So, so far you have an 11 and you have a nine, okay? And Lady would be L-D-Y. And since the Y follows a consonant, you treat it as a consonant. And that would be L is a three, D is a four, and Y is a seven. 
that would be 7 plus 7 would be 14. 1 plus 4 is 5. So her personality number for LDY would be a 5. The total is 25. So that would be 7. Okay. Her personality number would be a 7. Okay. The next core number that you would use is ones that you use calculating numbers that you have already calculated. And that is your maturity number, okay? The maturity number is when you add your destiny number, remember that one that was based on, on your name and your life path, which is based on your date of birth, okay? And your maturity number is your true self, your reality, realization, the ultimate goal, and the seat of your power, okay? And then I'm in the handout below, there is a chart of different personality traits and things um, that correspond to different numbers that you can come across, okay? And I'm going to go through them very briefly here. So new numbers and their overall um, kind of the overall picture for them, okay? So the number one, the talents and strengths of people um, that have, you know, number one involved somewhere along the line is that they they tend to be natural born leaders, pretty self-sufficient and fairly ambitious. An area of concern is that they can be a little bossy. They can also sometimes be shy and sometimes be very impulsive. Their general tendencies is they, you know, like to try a lot of new ideas and they like to stand out in the crowd. In a practical sense, like for careers, they tend to be like into positions of politics, leadership, celebrity, or like business owners. Number twos. They, the talents and strengths that they tend to be very loving. They tend to be the peacemakers. They're very analytical and they very much deemed by many to be like the ideal partner. Okay. Areas of concern for them can be, or the shadow trait is that they can tend to be a little bit of a wallflower to hang back. They may get stuck on the details. They tend to be very lonely. They can be doormats and um, they won't they won't speak up and you know kind of defend themselves general leanings it's very important to them to find the right relationship and they need harmony and order especially in the in the home okay as a practical outer expression like for jobs and stuff diplomatic core a counselor or a partner in a business okay they don't like to be the one out front though Okay, um, number threes are very outgoing, joy in life, imaginative, very enthousi enthusiastic. Some of the shadow traits is that they hate routine, they may lack self-discipline, and because of that lack of self-discipline, they may not accomplish very much, okay? They leave stuff just in midair, okay? Um, they usually have very energy, good energy and ideas in action, and it's important to them to have a good time. Good jobs and their outer kind of trappings, they would make a great press secretary, a party planner, or a small business promoter, you know, like in marketing or advertisement. Number fours. Um, they're very hard workers, they're practical, and they tend to get things done. I'm a four. Bet you guys didn't know that, huh? Some of the shadow traits is that they fear downsizing, not having a familiar routine, and can be rigid. And I can't. I'm a Leo on top of it. I get the, my poor better half. He, he just gets the double whammy. Um, 
there's also a need for security and you have an ability to develop order out of chaos and i found that very true in my career um because i was usually chicken salad out of chicken shit basically uh, a lot in my career so they tend to be really good at administrators being a team player back office of a small business and the team player part really came into play in my career in public safety okay because that's all about being a team and you know acting you know with command and everything like that number fives tend to be very bold daring and persuasive and they enjoy the finer things in life on the shadow side they get restless to the point of boredom and they can be easily sidetracked. What they like to do is to search for new opportunities. They take chances and they wanna try it all. Good careers for them tend to be like public, fi public fi figures, media, or they're like the idea guy or gal, okay? Number sixes tend to be very warm and nurturing and happily domestic and very reliable. The shadow side, they may end up feeling like a doormat they can be too opinionated uh, they find their happy place taking care of others finding safety and finding comfort in things and good careers for them tend to be like a personal assistant and educator or you know um, caterers something like that okay number sevens tend to be very deep thinkers spiritually inclined and can be a little bit eccentric um, they can be too aloof and they fear not living up to high standards. They can tend to be loners. Um, they like to seek answers of life, to observe and to discover things. They do well in analytical fields or self-employment. Okay. Number eight, they're decisive, they're forceful, they're good with money and they're very accomplished they often on the shadow side can lack feeling for those who stand in their way they will steamroll over people um, they like to strive for the higher to take control they like um, the power and they like the status um, they do very well in the professional field you know in management or operator of like a business franchise something like that um, number nines are inspired they're usually intuitive and creative and they want to they want to save the world you know uh, they need to avoid bad habits and attend to the details sometimes they're so big picture they miss what's really important in the in the small print um, they love seeing the big picture they dream the dream and these people tend to be really great community leaders um and to be like organizers like union organizers and things like that um number 11s tend to be visionaries um they can be an artist um they like to expand their consciousness um they uh like to avoid extremes they don't like they can be a little high strung and sometimes impractical impractical um, what they like to do is to gain enlightenment and to enlighten others. Um, they're in the f metaphysical and um, also small business. I'm also a number 11 on top of the number four. Bet you guys didn't know that, huh? So, um, and they can, number 11s tend to have a pretty far reaching appeal, okay? 22s now remember 11 and 22 are master numbers the 22 is a master builder number okay these people are usually very goal oriented and practical but they're practical on a global scale a bigger scale um they may have the feeling that they were born essentially a century too early that they are just too they are you know so visionary they are way ahead and in front of their contemporaries okay they're they can really overextend themselves they like to have a mission and to see it carried out on a 
big scale, a global scale. Um, one of these things could be, you know, being website designers um, for businesses for total glo global change, environmental um, pro, you know, activists, um, things of that nature, lobbyists, okay? Those that are out there to better mankind, you know, researchers, scientists, things of that kind of nature, okay? So those are some of the general things with numerology. So my friends, there's a little bit about numerology, a little bit more. Like I said, um, I'm, there is a worksheet in the Google Doc that I'm putting uh, in the description box. There is a worksheet in there that will help you work out your maturity number, your soul, your personality, your destiny, and your life path to get all your core numbers. There is also in there a um, lover's guide to numerology compatibility. And I know this is gonna, this is gonna get a lot of you there. So, you know, you can either compare a life path or your destiny numbers. Um, and that is in the handout, the Google Doc, in the description box. So be sure to check that out because uh, that's just too, you know, too much to go in. And this video is already long enough as it is. So again, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe if you do like this channel's content. Only 30% of you subscribe to my content, but you watch my videos. Uh, so be sure to jo join our little cauldron coven here. And uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It does help me in the algorithm. It gets my videos recommended um, to other people who are looking for information on witchcraft, the occult, and Wicca. Um, again, I will also leave uh, Uber Goober Ladies DLive channel and my DLive channel down in the description box because I am going to start doing some just random um, random live streams over there um, and I am uh, I'm still gonna do my YouTube uh, live streams with Nightshade on YouTube uh, but just random little little ones over there you know just like little cauldron chats or something like that I'm gonna do those over on D live so be sure to follow me on D live and as I always say, my friends, merry we to meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye.